Here we are. Here we are for episode eight. Your table experience. got taller. My table got taller and, you know, got some new casters up down here. It's a little more portable. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Upgrading. So, a new, uh, not new setup, not really. I'm, Since the last got, time we maybe, recorded one of I, these. I don't know if I had lights last time. So this is, yeah, new new setup. Yeah. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar with what this is, this is Palette Expanders, where BC and I bring bottles of mead or wine or beer, depending on what we decide to do, that are mysteries to both of us, or really to one of us. And we uh, <laughs> taste test, and then we kind of try and figure out uh, what what we have here. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, mine, what I've brought is this on the screen right now. And BC has brought this, so you have reference for what we are about to embark on. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'm gonna have to refer to my notes on this one. This one is actually not from the channel. This oh, really? A bit, a bit from the Private Reserve oh. series. Private Reserve. <laughs> is that the Patreon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with yours. Is let's start me? with... Yeah, let's start with mine. They are like almost the same color. Yeah, this is, might be the first time <laughs> that we have poured them and they've been the same color. I mean, color. really damn close. Which is rather impressive. I Almost to the fact I need to make sure that I'm not I know. confused. I think I'll be able to ID by smell. Yours is slightly... Oh, they might even be the same. Well, oh my gosh, they are so similar though. That's crazy. So yeah, we've just poured them and I mean, you saw it right there. And uh, we're gonna start with mine. We're gonna do some aroma checks okay. to see what kind of nose we get from this. I think this is yours. No, wait, I was gonna say. <laughs> You're... No, I yeah, because you poured you poured mine and it was there was a little degassing happening, <laughs> right? And there's still a little little haze on the side there. No, those are not the same. Okay, no, no, so that's one. Yeah, that one's fine. It's just got it's got a an aroma that I expected from mine. <laughs> yeah. What this if is, we brought the same that thing? That would be really weird. <laughs> uh, it would be very weird. Okay. What what you get from uh? So right yes. now, the problem I'm having is... Oklahoma. It's seasonal allergy time. <laughs> <laughs> so my nose is. Is, is not up to snuff right now. It's up to sniff. <laughs> it's not up to sniff right now. Up to sniff. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Uh -huh. um, I smell the alcohol just a little bit. So uh -huh. it tells me that it's a mead. There's some fruit, like a juicy fruitiness in there. Uh -huh. I feel like I've started saying juicy because you say it all the time. <laughs> Pick that up from you. There's something dark in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a chocolate or a coffee or my brain making it up, but there's, it, there does, there's something deep and roasty Okay. on the nose. I can see what you mean. Yeah. There's a, it is not um, bright. This is not a bright yeah. aroma at all. Yeah, but it's like, it's a it's a richness. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're right. It's not like a fresh, mm -hmm. like bright, just cut into the fruit kind of smell. It's like, a, it's an aged, rich, dense kind of fruit aroma. I agree. I actually really like the nose on this I, one. I do, I it's, too. It's like got my mouth watering. I've not bit. tasted this one in quite some time, so I'm just oh. hoping that it, <laughs> it's still good. All, all right. right, let's switch over to yours. Oh, it's vastly different. Uh, what am I smelling? It smells like it's got like a, I don't know if it's because you've planted that seed of like roastiness mm -hmm. to me, to in my brain, but it does have like a little bit of a roasty side that it's like not coffee. I, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm getting, mm -hmm. I'm not pinpointing exactly what it is. I don't get much um, sweetness on the nose as opposed to this, you get some sweetness. There's not a lot of like, brightness i do get a slight is it maybe like a hint of vanilla like a just a tiny tinge of vanilla on the nose that could be i can't tell if that's like an oak or if it's like a mm. yeah i don't get a lot of fruitiness <laughs> i don't get a lot of brightness i do just get like a roastiness and an oaky vanilla yeah it's a little bit non-distinct yeah a little muddled uh-huh yeah it's not not bad by any means i just I'm having a hard time discerning what 
what this is. I get what you're saying. There's nothing that like jumps out. Yeah. There's nothing that says I'm this, I'm this, I'm uh -huh. that. It's interesting. It's almost like, I, and I say this in a, in a way that like, the aroma is more flat. Like it doesn't have like what we're saying a lot of peaks and valleys to mm -hmm. um, look at. It's more just Oklahoma flat. <laughs> yeah. So, well, do you want to start with yours or mine? How do you want to do this? Do you want to go backwards? I, let's, let's start with yours. All right, let's do it. Okay, so now we're gonna taste test. Into something new. It's very smooth. Mm -hmm. Ages. Help yeah, this one up. There's no burn. This is juicy. Like, I mean, yeah. That is. <laughs> yeah. No. This. This is. A, this has got a real like cran apple kind of mm -hmm. juiciness to it. Mm -hmm. Like if you. I mean, it's kind of like you poured a jug of cran apple juice in here. It's got that. I mean, obviously it tastes like mead too, yep. but it's got that real like refreshing, thirst quenching juiciness to it. Um, the honey is present. The honey uh, hits you at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then as you like swallow and exhale, you get that fruity tartness, like a punchy tartness. Yep. Not a sourness. Again, like a cranberry, mm -hmm. like a like a tart, and a and a tannin that gets you right down the middle. I was gonna say the tannin for me is very aggressive like I it is the beginning of it is that kind of refreshingness and mm -hmm. then there's like it just like sucks all the moisture out and because my tongue is like yeah it gets it's a little gritty and it's but like, in a good way I don't yeah. know if that's that tartness you're talking about or if that is just that oh, I don't want to spoil too much but there is a a feel sensation in your mouth with the tannin yeah in a way that really grips on and holds on and like i'm so used to tannin happening down the middle of the tongue or in the sides of the mouth this one kind of catches you in the back of the palate yeah. it's a newer sensation for me i don't think i've had a lot of tannin i, I haven't had any way. much like this either that hits that way you know i i think that um it's more pointed it is like what you're saying that location on your tongue is different than most normal tannin point i gotta say though i can i i'm gonna have a tough time guessing what this is mm, that's fair it's very cohesive. Yeah. Uh, kind of in the way we were saying the nose on mine was very cohesive, very, I don't want to say flat, but very, it's striking one big bold note. Your The palate on yours is doing that. It's, it's very strongly one flavor. So do you, I guess I'm gonna ask some leading questions oh. without giving the, okay. do you get any fruit? Do you get no fruit? On this, those are easy weed questions. Again, I'm getting an astringent tart fruit. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like a cranberry. It's got a real, like, I, I was at um, family's house having dinner this weekend and they had chocolate covered cranberries. And I, I like never eat fresh cranberries. And so I bit into one that had like no chocolate on it. Somehow mm. I missed grabbing one with <laughs> chocolate on it and it was so tart and tannic. And, mm -hmm. This has got that same kind of mm -hmm. sensation. I feel that. If I yeah, if I had to just throw out a guess on fruit, I would say cranberry because of that 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 tannin structure, the puckery tartness. Uh, there's there is something that I feel like is like warm in there, like a warm note, and which may be from the honey varietal that you chose. Because mm -hmm. um, the honey flavor, like I said, is very prominent at the beginning. This one's tricky. I'll tell it's, you that. It is, a little, it is a little tricky. I feel like this would be really nice hot. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. I'll have, I'll have other Do bottles. you have any other questions for me? No, no, that was the main thing. You hit kind of the points that I was okay. going I, I do. I think that this is a fruited mead, and I think it's a fruited mead with a really nice honey varietal, mm -hmm. and that's about where I'm at at this point. All right. I, I mean, great. Okay. Let's switch over to yours. So here we go. Definitely I'm getting way more coffee note now on the palate. Mm -hmm. mm. It's been a while since I've had this one. They aren't dissimilar. Mm -mm. That's <laughs> why I'm struggling. I have to have something. <laughs> Normally we bring opposites. Like it's, I, it's always happened. <laughs> this is the first time that we've been like kind of, you know, next door. I mean, yeah. The it is almost like we tried to brew the same thing <laughs> and had different takes on it. All right, I'm going back in. Much, much easier to. Yeah. 
So the honey character is really popping more on the actual palette. Um, and I do get like the roasty side is coming back. Mm -hmm. So without spoiling it for you, I will tell you this is one that it was like an idea that I had that I wanted to brew, but never was going to brew it. Mm -hmm. And then the opportunity to brew it happened. Uh -huh. And so this nothing was perfected in here. There was a lot of throwing stuff at the wall to see what stuck. And so I'm kind of at the point now that it's a year old. It's really good. We can we can take some notes on what could be improved next time. It's got a little bit of like caramel e note. Like to me, I wonder if there's like some element, some minor element of Beauchene alongside a smidge of coffee, not necessarily going for like flavor, but I feel like that flavor might have risen over time. Um, and then sweetness. I'm not getting any fruit. I'm not getting like. I feel pretty confident in my honey understanding in life at this point. And <laughs> yeah, maybe it's because they're conflicting, competing flavors, but I'm not getting like a predominant Tupelo, you know, predominant um, in your face kind of honey varietal. Yeah. My, I'm kind of going down that. I, my senses are saying caramel, boche, like coffee roastiness, and then some sort of like wildflower. Uh, I mean, I don't know that wildflower. I, I don't know what kind of honey. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into a spot <laughs> like that. But it's really good though. I like the body on it. I like that it, the, the two are very different tannic value wise. This mm -hmm. one, mine is more, I mean, it pulls a lot of moisture. Yeah. This washes a little more mm -hmm. and um, a little easier to drink, I would say. I almost want a little bit more tannin in mine. Yeah. Just a little bit more cling. In yeah, there. maybe so. But I, I don't get any fruit I don't, that's my guess it's like okay it's not discernible at least. okay <laughs> which that's interesting i mean i i know what's in here right so i know what to look for right right right. i feel like it's there but i feel like it is balanced by the other stuff yeah that's in there i'm sure once you say it i'll go there it is you know mm -hmm. which is part of this challenge yeah i definitely think on a side note because of this show I, my palate has already gotten way better oh yeah just at you know, misidentifying things and then hearing what the truth is and going, oh, okay, that makes sense. Right. Like, like just putting the You're able to like connect together. those synapses yeah. for future use. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So um, since we're fresh off yours. Okay. And let's see how, how wrong I am. What have you <laughs> brought this evening? Oh, sorry. Is, did you make a guess? That's my that, guess. That is your Boche guess. With some okay. caramel notes, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to make a fruit selection because you've okay. already yielded and said that there's fruit, but I was, I was posting my guess. So. Okay, so Anna's great uncle is a beekeeper. Okay. And for the last two years, he's given me a gallon of honey to do whatever I want with. And it's, it is given to me through Anna's grandmother. And so okay. I wanted to brew something that she would like, but that he could like since it was brewed with his own honey, and I basically gave them the whole batch. Uh -huh. I kept a couple of bottles, one of which I brought here tonight. Mm -hmm. So this was brewed about a year ago with the first batch of honey that Frank gave me. And Anna's grandmother really liked chocolate-covered cherries. Uh, okay. But she doesn't like sweet wine. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge that I set up for myself with this one was to do chocolate-covered cherry, but not have it be overly sweet, mm -hmm. but use Frank's honey. Yeah. And so what I ended up doing was brewing a mead with his honey mm -hmm. with some black cherry juice in primary. Okay. And then in secondary, I used toasted cacao nibs and vanilla to okay. give it some of those chocolatey flavors. Okay. And then it was very dry, bone dry. And uh, her family's also not big into wines that have been stabilized. Right. They like natural wines. So I used erythritol instead of stabilizers for this wine for this mead also. So it is it is inspired by chocolate covered cherries. The it, roastiness, that makes sense for the roastiness. The cherry is, I mean, it's, it is not your stereotypical cherry. To me, it does not have that stereotypical cherry no. taste. It's not bright. It's very like uh, black cherry, dark cherry. And maybe mm -hmm. that's over time, you know, mellowing of cherry flavor. 
especially darker cherry. I don't know. I don't know what you used. I but... use black cherry juice. Okay. Yeah. And I use dried cherries in secondary too. I don't know that they did much of yeah. anything, but they were in there. The chocolate makes sense for where my brain was going mm -hmm. with the the uh, coffee. Um, there's a bit of, and I think part of that is my my. I was sensing a slight bit of acidity and maybe that was coming from the cherry juice yeah. and then so the collaboration of acidity to <laughs> roastiness I was going oh that has some coffee yeah um so I I gave it to them they seemed to really enjoy it they yeah. loved it they shared it with their boat club friends mm -hmm. uh, I think there are a lot of areas that this could be improved to nail that cherry chocolate flavor I think it should be sweeter mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in that case I would prefer to back sweeten with honey rather than erythritol so you get some of that honey flavor back in there yeah uh, and probably I would leave it on the the cacao nibs longer I would um, yeah I would love a little more uh, chocolate flavor I do think sweetness would bring out more of that cherry mm -hmm. and I think that using honey I know obviously you had a reason for not using honey mm -hmm. um, would could also kind of collaborate within that. I, I think it's great. I do think it's good. I I don't identify all of those cherry right. and chocolate flavors, but like you said, this is not this isn't just like this recipe we're gonna talk about. <laughs> this is not a recipe that you've you've done twenty times. You know, no. you're you kind of throwing things out there. And it's this very is, good for for a first brew. It's like kind of time. inspiring me to try and tackle it again. This is way better than my chocolate and cherry. <laughs> I have one in a similar fashion, almost exactly. Yeah. This, this is way better, so. It was a tough flavor profile to nail. And I, I learned a lot, because I had never used cacao nibs before, I had never used dried cherries before. Yep. I learned a lot during dried the process. Cherries. Yeah, dried That's cherries typically come covered in sunflower oil. Oh, So What'd in order do? to get that off, this is like sacrilege, this might be patron <laughs> exclusive. I washed them with Dawn dish soap. <laughs> To get to get the oil off, and then I dunked them in stars in and chucked them oh, in. Oh man, that's the perfect title for this. I washed it with Dawn dish soap. I did because it, it's a detergent. It takes the oil off. That of is awesome. Yeah, all the oil came off. <laughs> I love that. that, is, that is great. I know it's probably sacrilege, but it wasn't for the channel. Someone so got it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so people need to chill out. <laughs> um, did we get to your guess for mine? Okay. I shouldn't have just polished mine off before I, I went in here. Man, as this one has sat, it has really opened up. Uh -huh. The nose on it is much more Flavor profile, again, they're, they're in that same um, thing. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> it's so... I mean, it really has melded really well mm -hmm. in the bottle. I would agree. I would agree. So it's hard to pick out anything that, like, really jumps out ingredient wise if i had to guess i would guess i don't think this has cranberries in it but i want to guess that because that's what it tastes like <laughs> and so i'm going to guess that it's some kind of like bow shade maybe just like a tiny bit because there's some roastiness some like mm -hmm. some richness in there or maybe it's a honey that tastes like that so I, let, let me nix the bow shake and scratch <laughs> that off i think it's cranberry and avocado blossom honey Cranberry avocado. All right. This is <clears throat> from the Can It Be a Mead series. Okay. This is, I call it the tart heart. It is pomegranate, mm. buckwheat honey. Okay. Uh huh. There's your roastiness. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, clove. Oh. The clove didn't stick around for the party, did it? No, it did not. I was—I huh. uh, guess I did not use quite <laughs> enough, or it's just um, decided. It has to... just turned into tannin. Yeah. Interesting. I don't really taste the buckwheat in there, but I get the richness that it brings to the. Table. I get a little bit of the grassiness from that buckwheat, mm. but it's not. Yeah, you're right. It's not a. Mm. I, yeah. I believe I used it to back sweet for this one. Okay. Cause I thought about using like a clover and then I got to it and I was like, it's too bright. And so I need something that's sweet, but dark. And yeah. so of course buckwheat is just perfect for it. Yeah. Pomegranate makes sense. That's very much in the same camp as, mm -hmm. as cranberry juice would be. So that and I use pomegranate ones. juice. So I did not use the real fruit. Yeah. I can imagine. I did not want to use the real yeah. fruit. Never. It's very good. I I'm a big fan of this, this one. I definitely good. think of, I mean, I've done a lot of Canopy Amids. 
But this one definitely works well, especially over time. Some of them yeah. have not aged well. This one has aged well, which is... It's very nice. good. Well, I, um, I would not say that we were both totally successful in this <laughs> venture, but it was fun regardless. It's always and a good time. I definitely... I, I think we both brought pretty good products. There's uh, been a, quite a few that I've felt that I've brought a product and went, oh crap, <laughs> like that. We shouldn't have opened, I shouldn't have opened that bottle. But I feel pretty confident in these. No, this I feel great. good about these. These, honestly, these would be great table meads. Yeah. Like something that you would you'd open up over dinner, mm -hmm. share with friends, and everyone can find something that they like about either of these. Yeah, yeah. So I know yours is not a video, but I, I, We'll share your recipe and maybe put even a what you might adjust. Kind of okay. put a, yeah, that's great. a, you know, here's the original, here's what you would change. Um, there's no video for his, as he'd mentioned, it was not on the channel. So, you know, regardless, go check out his channel. Every now and then you gotta brew for yourself. You need to always brew for yourself, <laughs> even if you're doing videos. I've, I've learned that lesson, yeah. it's is brutal. But there's a video from mine, um, it's Can It Be A Mead? So I'll put that link down below. You probably saw a couple clips of that in here. Go check out Doing The Most. Um, he is, I mean, you've seen him a lot on the channel, but I want to make sure to that one person who said, I don't plug Doing The Most enough. Oh. I'm gonna plug him even more. Here you go, well, there's, here's all the plug, all the ways you can find Doing The, the Most. the person that said they're tired of seeing me, so. <laughs> <laughs> no one's happy. <laughs> Can't have it both ways. So go, right, che go check him out and uh, you will see us in another uh, Palette Expanders soon. And see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.